you'll find that most people can forgive and move on, especially your spouse. They, you can say, I, I messed up. And they'll, you can start over. Thinking that you can get, get out of it and not a, be accountable for your part in it isn't going to work very good. It's not going to really repair it. If you have a temper, you can, you can help to soften it by dealing with the little things. Now, you have to be aware of them. I'm Cherry Lynn, and I'm here again with Dixie and Dylan Forsyth. Hi, Dixie. Hi, Cherry. We are here to talk about the feminine woman having a temper. So why are we, why are we, ta- what do you mean by temper, and why are we talking about this today? Well, some of our ladies are types that are kind of fiery, and, and some of us are just say things, they just bubbles out, and sometimes we, uh, and some of us are those who bottle things in and bottle things in, and then explosion, and then we say things we don't mean. We think, oh, great. Now now what do I do? You kind of give yourself the luxury of an explosion. And sometimes it feels like you can't help it. So what do you do now? And some of us have more of a problem with it than others. Is this uh, only for alpha females? I don't think so. Although, although it may happen more with alphas. Look, none of us is perfect. None of us is going to be perfect here. So how do we manage these things in the best way possible? Mm-hmm. And some of late our ladies misunderstand fascinating womanhood and think because they read these principles, think this is great. This gives this whole picture of this ideal, perfect woman. Great. Mm-hmm. That's a goal to set. That's not, I haven't arrived at it. And I'm probably older than any of you guys out there. I have not arrived. You're going to mess up. Mm-hmm. I do, you will. So the question is, what do you do? How do you minimize the mess ups so that you gradually become better? Gradually is the key. And what do you do about it once you've done it? Right, so that's why we're focusing on a temper. Okay, let me share a personal experience. One time when I was uh, early married, I think I had a couple of kids. We were in uh, Bob is still in school and we went up to Canada uh, during the summer because Bob's Canadian. He could work up there. He couldn't work down in the U.S., yeah, he's American citizen now. So he was working up there. We were living with his parents for the summer while he worked. His mother is was a really wonderful person, and she got a little bit threatened beca- uh, by me. And I didn't understand. I never quite understood it, but um, she was critical of me and the way I was uh, raising my kids. She was giving me unwanted suggestions. And she did this over a period of several weeks so that I, it built up in me and built up in me. And I was really irritated. She would give me advice on when to put the kids to bed and and feeding them and and all kinds of stuff. And so finally, I exploded, which is if people who know me know, I don't do that real often. I did. And I I, uh, told her it really bugged me that she was doing that. And I don't remember what I said, but I did it. And um, she, it hurt her feelings so bad. I remember she had a garden out in back. And I remember going out and seeing her with a, a hoe, just kind of scratching it in the dirt. She was really depressed. And I felt so terrible. I thought, I cannot believe. See, now I've gotten myself in this mess. What do I do? And I, I knew that the only way I could fix it is I had to apologize. The thought of that was so like awful. <laughs> like, I have to apologize to her. I was still kind of upset. The reason I needed to apologize is because she didn't deserve the outburst. She deserved the honest, maybe, confrontation, but not not the outburst. And that's what I needed to apologize for. And I thought to myself, I did it. And it was really hard because I was young and I was a lot more less humble, maybe, than I am now. Because it, it isn't as hard now for me. But it was then. It was really hard. And when I apologized to her and told her that I loved her and and I said to myself, I will never, ever do that again because the repair of it is not worth it. The luxury of getting upset with her is not worth the price I paid in having to repair it. It was really hard for me, and I never did again. And I would say that afterwards, after I had said I will never do that again, I did, it did feel really good that it was settled. And she was, she was more careful. There was a boundary set, too. She was more careful. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I was more careful. I really regret that I had to learn it that way 
seeing her hurt feelings, seeing the damage it did to her was not worth it at all. And because she really, she really was a wonderful person. She had so many good qualities that way outweighed the things that were maybe not appropriate or overstepped the boundaries. But I set a boundary and I learned from it. And you can too, from, from those things. You can say, boy, whatever happens, I'm not doing that again. So what, in order for that to not happen, you have to have another plan. And the other plan is you take care of the little things as they go along. And they don't, they don't have like, you know, would you please not do such and such? It really hurts my feelings. And if you do repair, just say, I would never deliberately hurt you. Please forgive me for doing that. I, I just, I can't stand to hurt your feelings. Whatever you say that is real from your heart, say it to repair it. Because if you just, you know, some of us have situations where it just keeps building up and building up. The best thing to do in those situations is if you find that you're real irritated, try not to stuff it so much. That's what leads to the explosion. Explosions don't happen without something packing down in there. That's what causes it. So if you can say, you know, when you do this, it, it really bothers me when you confront the smaller things. And even though that's painful, it's not anywhere near as painful as the explosions. But that being said, if you do have an explosion, you can always apologize, even if, you know, you know they did something wrong. What you apologize for is the thing you know. You you, I think you bring up a good point. You're not only apologizing to the person, you're apologizing for yourself as well. It's True. something that you need to do for yourself as well as for the other person. I think but, a lot of people don't realize that. You'll find that most people can forgive and move on, especially your spouse. They, you can say, I, I messed up. And they'll, you can start over. Thinking that you can get, get out of it and not a, be accountable for your part in it isn't going to work very good. It's not going to really repair it. If you have a temper, you can, you can help to soften it by dealing with the little things. Now, you have to be aware of them. Focus on them like, and it seems like a small thing. It's really bugging me. My mother-in-law keeps saying, you don't, you put your kids to bed too early, in my case. Because, you know, I can say, you know, I, I appreciate you helping me here, but I really feel that my kids need to go to bed at this time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do that. I let it simmer and smolder and smolder. And that and her feeding my kids hot fudge Sundays for breakfast. <laughs> when I, I was raised in a family, my mother was a complete opposite with, health food and I felt like I was sort of in between so there was that and the just little things they're all little things I wish I hadn't done any of it didn't make any difference in the long run the relationship made the biggest difference so you being more tolerant of things and setting boundaries where you absolutely need to is going to be the key to you not exploding. I, I struggle with this. I'll just be honest. This is something that I struggle with. And one thing that does help me, and I need to do this more often, but one thing that, that you can definitely try if you're struggling with this is writing it down. So how you said earlier, I will never do this again, saying that to yourself. To me, I have to take it a step further than that because sometimes I'll say I'm never doing this again and then I, I explode again. And it's, a, it's something that you have to practice, right? And so one right. thing that helps me to in my practicing of it is to sit down and write it down and say, I am never going to do this again. And I hide the note somewhere where no one can see it, but I know that it's there. But it, it's equally as important for you to recognize what things are driving you crazy that is going to lead up to it. Because yeah. if you can nip that in the bud, as they say, and think, you know, it really bugs me that this keeps happening over and over. Uh, you can say, I've, I've got to, instead of being like the coward that I was, instead of talking to my mother-in-law before, I would have never had that blow up if I had had the courage to deal with the things that were, that were building up to the temper thing. What about when things though are out of your control? Which is a lot of things. Like yeah, because that, that, in that scenario that you brought up, a little bit more in your control to be able to say, okay, I'm aware of this and I need to do A, B, and C to kind of, like you were saying, the small things. But what about things around you that you can't control? Right. If something's bugging you because, uh, let's think of an example. Um, you have relatives visiting and they're, huh? And they're yeah. doing things. You can't really say, you can't, you don't really feel like you can be, for instance, in my case, you can't be really picky and say, hey, people are leaving stuff around my house. Please pick it yeah. up. Yeah. Or, or you're, you know, you've got kids that are 
you're tired. You, maybe you have just like layers of things that are contributing to your temper and your temper issues. How do you manage that? First of all, recognize what it is. Such and such really bothers me. You might want to write that down. Mm -hmm. And then ask yourself, what can I do about this? Like you said, if it's something you can't do anything about, like you, let's say you have a child that is in a habit of getting up in the night and you're tired all the time. What do you do? You can do the best you can, but sometimes you just have to, you just kind of have to work with it. There's nothing you can do. Then you have to work on yourself on saying, you know what? I'm not going to resist this. I'm going to go with it. Any of you have ever had a baby and been in labor? Now, I was not like you girls. I no epidurals, none. I just did the breathing thing. So what they taught us is when you're having a contraction, instead of fighting that pain and your and your uh, muscles clench, you you allow it almost like you're welcoming it with open arms. I know that sounds weird. You you go with it. It's actually less painful. And there's probably a hundred other things you could do to go with something rather than fighting it. Finding something you can't control. Like the weather, you get so mad because you were planning on doing something and there's a storm outside. Mm -hmm. You can, that's something obviously none of us control is the weather. You can say, okay, hmm, it's storming outside. Oh, well, I'll do <laughs> such and such. Rather than that thing of, no, I can't accept this. I mm -hmm. cannot accept this. It doesn't fit in with my plans. You can go with the flow. I know it's a common phrase, go with the flow. Yeah. But, but it, it actually is valuable. And it's also part of self-care, allowing yourself to not have to do certain things in a certain way all the time. Mm -hmm. So, okay, plan B, if that makes sense. That's yeah. what I do that helps me. And it helps to keep you more in the fascinating womanhood zone. Fascinating, remember, fascinating womanhood is a way of life. It's not something you become tomorrow, like you get a degree and you never learn anymore after that. And so it's what you're becoming. And you become that every day. And you, to be adored by your husband, you don't have to be perfect. You yeah, don't so have to never make mistakes. You can make mistakes. You just have to be humble. If you backslide, uh, you know, and you make a mistake, there's things you can do about it. If you have a temper, you can, you can start over and work on not having those explosions happen. Happening. Yeah. What if it takes you 10 years? It's still worth it. Yes. And we, we did an episode on battles with anger. Everyone should watch that one. That goes hand in hand with hand in hand with this episode. And definitely everyone out there that has not read fascinating womanhood for the timeless woman. I will attach a link below because that is definitely a part of this journey is reading her book. Uh, Dixie's book is so inspiring and so incredible. It talks about all of these things we're talking about today, as well as the work, workbook mm -hmm. that goes along with her book will also be attached down below. Thank you so much for all of your advice today and we will see everyone next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.